Okay, so I'm going to start out by this. Well, I'm going to describe it as a building plot because although it's rustic and has no current permission, I would eat my shorts publicly on YouTube, Facebook, or whatever social media channel you like if you can build on here because we have all utilities. It's between other dwellings. There's dwellings on the other side of the road. We've got uh, main sewage in the road, electricity and water. So it, you can see it's bounded by a stone wall all the way around. There are some mature and not so mature olive trees, a couple of pine trees in there. But it is right, right down to the lane where the cars are parked, and we'll get that in a minute. Obviously, part of the wall was uh, knocked down there. Whether that was for access reasons or what, I do not know. But really nice village building plot that is included in the price of this property. So here we come then. The cars are parked at the end of that building plot. And then there is an access track which goes to one man's olive um, grove, uh, which he visits probably three times a year, which is kind of normal. It does belong to the actual property that we're having a look at at the moment. Uh, but he does have access. Nobody else. I mean, this, I mean the, the current owner has actually put a gate in place and it's not an issue at all. And I'll tell you, it, it's definitely not an issue and I'll explain why it's not an issue in any way in just a moment. So, I mean, you can see what the... I'll just do a little pan of this surrounding countryside. It's a really quiet village location. So as you can see, big double sliding metal gates. So there's parking here. So the two cars are outside, one, one was mine and one was the, again, the current owners. We, we shall, uh, I'll just put my light on. We shall have a look in here. This is uh, completely registered, completely urban, and it has a number of options. You can put windows in, with a project, you can put windows in. You can put double doors in there, big garage doors in there, and, and have this as, as a garage if you wanted to do that, uh, which, you know, a lot of people do prefer a garage. Then, of course, the garage would have access out into this really nice courtyard. And there's a little covered woodshed over here in the corner. It's always handy. There's access uh, to, the, to the house on two spaces. That one goes into a hallway that services uh, an office bedroom or, or WC, and that goes into the kitchen. But isn't this a delight? This is a really, really nice space. And I can imagine if I lived here, oh, I'd spend a lot of time here. Drinking herbal tea and whiling away the hours. Okay, gin and tonic, but you get the, you get the picture. And uh, this stone staircase is absolutely gorgeous. It's really nice, goes up. Again, comes from the hallway up there and gives you access out to this fabulous courtyard area. So we're going to the kitchen. It has a sort of farmhouse rustic feel to it. It's really nice, I really like this kitchen. It reminds me of my old house. And yeah, it's got, it's got plenty of workspace. It's got plenty of uh, room. It's got a decent size of dining table in there. It also has what I would never be without again. A decent pantry or 
larder. And I always find them invaluable. The fridge is located within the larder at the moment. However, if you don't like fridges in larders for some reason, you can put the fridge there because that's where it originally was. Or you, there is a plug behind that white uh, unit there. So, it, you know, it would be entirely up to you uh, where you where you did that. So um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go through the house. I know I normally do gardens first. But I'm going to go through the house here, and here is a really spacious lounge, which used to be three rooms apparently. Two of them lounges, which is a bit odd. A lot of a lot of the windows face out onto a <laughs> pretty garden. I mean, if you're a gardener, this may be the place for you. It really might. But yeah, back to back to the indoors. So really spacious lounge. It's got tons of room. It's really nice. You can see the radiators on the wall. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the central heating, which hasn't been used all the time that the current owner has been here because that log burner has been enough for her. Uh, she says she just doesn't need to use it. Uh, it's well, yeah, he has the room to upstairs. It's iron spiral staircase. But we'll continue down here. Now, I was just informed that they used to have chickens in here, um, you know, uh, laying eggs and, you know, doing what chickens do. I've never seen that before. And well, there is a small WC also of uh, this little hallway. And it goes back out onto the, cult, the courtyard where we just came in. And here is, at the moment, it's a single bedroom, as you can see. Could just as easily be a study. It is all wired out. Again, got a radiator in here. Uh, for internet and, and all that kind of thing. So if you need an office, that would be a perfect solution for you. So let, let's do the spiral staircase, which uh, with a gimbal is slightly interesting, but uh, well, let's, uh, let's give it a go. So here we are, top of the stair, the landing, storage. This lady likes her curtains. <laughs> I mean, it does kind of hide the, hide the clutter and what have you. And the utility uh, space is also behind the curtains. So they've got your washing machine and um, stuff that needs to happen with laundry. It's all in there. I'll show you that. I'll pan down. So there we go. And again, everywhere you go, it's got nice views. It's all very pretty. Um, really big, nice bathroom. It's kind of a bit of a combination. It's got a, got a full bath there, and you'd expect it would have been enough to put a shower on there. But it's also got almost a wet room feel it's got this lovely sort of shower here too really big lovely room so through we go into i'm going to call it the master bedroom i mean with a bit of jigging you could actually create an ensuite Really, uh, tons of storage, loads of built in wardrobes there, and again, the outlook is most pleasant. Really nice views out there into what is a really lovely garden. And as I said, we'll get to the garden in a moment, but uh, 
It's just finished. Oh, here. This lady is a gardener, and it's what well, it, it's it's her thing, and she calls it a gardener's garden, and I can understand that. I'm not a gardener, by the way. I didn't let that on. But um, it, it, I mean, I appreciate a nice one. I just don't like gardening. So, I mean, you know, there we have the upstairs done. Again, that's the storage stuff. I'm not going to open every single curtain and reveal her personal effects. But uh, there's a lot of mirrors here. I hate getting caught in mirrors. But <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go this way. It's in the courtyard, so we shall go into the back garden. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty house from where, whichever direction you look at. Of course, out on the road there, you don't see a lot of it because it's uh, got walls. But it's pretty from back here. And of course, this is where you'd spend most of your time looking at that garden. That's the little right of way area I told you about. And the building plot is just there to give you that orientation. Now, it's fenced all along here. And that's what I was saying. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I'd just like call it, I'd just ignore it. And say it's, you know, it's public access or whatever. Because this garden is perfect, just as it is. Um, Little pathways have been put in very lovingly. And it's all very uh, low water. You don't need a lot of water for this garden at all. Um, so I've planted it deliberately like that. There's quite a lot of cacti and these, uh, these wild flowers, which are completely deliberate and planted, uh, don't require a lot of watering. So the tank, water tank, which is fed from the guttering off the roof, which again, we'll get to in a few minutes time, is enough to see you through pretty much all your um, agricultural needs. Um, I, it, as I said, it's fenced a lot of the way around, but it's a big tall fence. So apart from one area, if you've got dogs, you can, uh, one bit of fencing and your dogs are secure. Yeah, they can't get out and they've got, obviously, as you can see, plenty of room to roam around in. So, again, his fence is a old wooden shed there and apparently the, the roof opens up because the, uh, the owner before was a star stargazer and he, uh, that's what he did. And then apparently the roof opened up. He sat in there with his telescope and did what stargazers do. Gaze at the stars. Yeah. So come around and uh, it's not this fence here. This is all part of it. That green building is included. It's actually a chicken run. So if you want to keep chickens, and that's not a problem. It's already ready for them. So as you can see here, this stone wall is your boundary. And uh, that's the only bit that if you wanted it to be completely fenced off, then you'd have to fence this bit here. But not, it's, not, it's not enormous at all. So it's a little bit overgrown down there, so I'm not going to go that way. But we'll go around here because there are some uh, vegetable plots. If growing vegetables is something that you do or you want to do, uh, already done. Um, as you see, there's some raised some raised beds here that don't really look in use at the moment. 
Um, that's water storage and little wooden shed. That's all included. And we'll get round. There's lots of fenced off areas. I mean, you can obviously, well, actually, you could use part of this fencing for that outside wall if you um, didn't need that part of it, the enclosed was. I'm have to confess, I'm a little bit lost. It is a bit mazy here, um, but we've got this fantastic era, you know, stone threshing circle, uh, which is always a delight to have. Really nice space. Um, the current owner has started to trellis it up and put vines over the top. Now you could you could extend that over the whole thing, and that would be fairly amazing. So let's continue and go and find those vegetable plots that I mentioned already, because they are well established. Here's the tank. Now this is all fed from water. I mean, it is enormous, and it will. I mean, unless you go crazy last you right the way through for you you know, keeping your garden irrigated throughout the summer but here we are already established now i i was told what the names of all these plants are but it's all gone beyond me i mean i can see courgettes and lettuces and onions and cabbages and I know there's a strawberry plot here. There are gravel pathways in between, and they're kind of all covered up a bit at the moment. But um, see, so yeah, there's your there's your strawberry patch. That's just coming in. Now it's getting ready to um, produce strawberries, which is a great thing. There you've got your another little wooden shed, another garden. And there we go. And this, I'll just walk by. Oh, solar, solar hot water um, provides most of your hot water needs throughout the year. And uh, it's got a nice big tank on there. And the central heating is currently diesel. But for not a lot of money, you could convert that to pellet or something a bit more organic. Uh, because yeah, all the all the radiators and everything else is already here. But as I already said, the the lady who lives here now says she never needed to use it. Uh, she says, oh, you know, just have that log burner on. I mean, I suppose it depends on what kind of temperatures you like. But um, there's the uh, current system for the central heating, and I'll just try and find a shot of the house from the back Ooh. which isn't easy because there's lots of trees and things in the way not really nice seating area I think this is about the best I'm gonna manage to do it doesn't do it justice I can see that through the through my lens but it really is nice and it really has got a lovely peaceful feel to the whole property but anyway, speak to you all soon.